Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for joining us for this study group. Um, I want to obviously start with uh, saying that this study group is uh, mainly for Refua Shalema to our Rav, Rav Yitzchak Faivish Ben Brenda Malka, and uh, also Refua Shalema to our friend Bluma Batkin and Tova, and Refua Shalema to uh, my kids. Um, uh, they should uh, all have a full shalema. So that's uh, our study group. Um, what we're doing is uh, going over the wonders of the parasha. It's uh, the weekly, uh, let's call it newsletter, <laughs> um, is one way of calling it, of Divrei Torah, of uh, uh, very deep wonders that Rabbi Ginsburg teaches every week, and uh, part of it is the weekly uh, class that he gives uh, when there is, and other parts are various different teachings um, of wonders for the Parsha. Um, so we'll uh, start with um, last week. Last week we spoke uh, a little bit about, um, and uh, Eliezer did have a link created for uh, that study group that we've started. We spoke a little bit about um, um, love of God and fear of God and awe of God. Um, and uh, as we uh, said, a uh, very uh, wonderful um, explanation that Rabbi Ginsburg translation that Rabbi Ginsburg gave to the world, Yira, which is sensitivity. So we'll say love of God and sensitivity of God. Um, that we uh, learned from our uh, Friedeke Rebbe, the previous Rebbe of Chabad, uh, uh, the Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, Rabbi Rayatz. Um, he taught us that um, we can get love of God and sensitivity to God by learning the, uh, the deep Torah of that generation, which is like food, and by going to sleep, basically um, hearing stories of the um, tzaddikim, the righteous people of, whether it's this generation uh, or previous generation, stories that uh, can move us forward and, and allow us to go to sleep well at night. So that was last week. This week we're going to learn about sleeping well at night, and uh, we're going to learn from, uh, uh, we're going to go into, if you look at my screen, the uh, first uh, shiur that uh, I had the wonderful pleasure of uh, seeing Rabbi Ginsburg at his house, even though he's not feeling as well. Um, and uh, he, um, uh, for the yard side, uh, the passing date of his mother, he came out and gave this uh, shiur. Wonderful wonders that we're going to try to a little bit peek at and try to uh, learn. So in this shiur, the, the main questions that we're going to look into is how do we make this love of God and, and sensitivity to God? How do we make it internal? How do we make it that, uh, um, how do we look at uh, challenges that we have in life, whether it's, um, um, let's call it love or really lust or desire for other things that are not um, uh, directly connected or we think that are not directly connected? We'll get into all that. And how do we uh, have sensitivity? to God um, in a very um, correct way, and not that we think we are sensitive to God, but really we're sensitive to various other distractions. So that's uh, that's the class that uh, we're going to try to um, go into. Um, I did ask Eliezer to give everyone the option to, uh, to speak. So if anyone wants to ask questions, um, we can do a little bit now and a little bit maybe if 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 there's a if people want we can maybe do it at the end as well. So if anyone has questions, you can unmute yourself for a minute and ask. We'll try to uh, to answer them before we dive in to this uh, this class this year. Okay, <laughs> no problem. All right, so let's dive right in. Um, I have on my screen the. The shiur. Um, Rabbi Ginsburg is teaching um, uh, Keto Shem Tov, which is uh, the book of the Divrei Torah of the Baal Shem Tov, uh, written by Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Mipolda. Um, 
in, uh, in the first parak, parak Aleph, in uh, Od Samech Vav. So in this, um, in this uh, letter, um, that's the way this book is, is, uh, has just like chapters, it has letters. In this letter, we're going to um, start with the Song of Songs. And the Baal Shem Tov reads off, uh, or um, I'm sure he said them in a beautiful way. If uh, one of the things, if I may take a quick side note to say that if uh, one of the things that really gets you, <laughs> gets me, um, is to see Rabbi Ginsburg saying uh, a verse, a Pasuk in Torah. Um, just the way he says it is amazing. And I urge everybody to, to watch a, a class or shiur of Rabbi Ginsburg. There's a lot on YouTube and in Hebrew and English, whatever is uh, more convenient. And just see him say, uh, say a verse. It's amazing. But in the first four verses of the uh, third chapter of Shir Shirim, and I'm highlighting it right here in my screen. Um, there is um, um, a story of a bride, uh, a kala, um, that's uh, trying to find the one that the soul uh, loves and, and, and asks for and desires. So, al mishkavi balilo, the first pasuk, um, on my bed at night, and if uh, everyone... Um, Whoever has seen the first study group about last week, we spoke about the bed at night, um, the sensitivity that that gets you. That if you want to be sensitive, um, one of the ways to look at it is look at it on your bed at night. It's a, a place, a chance. I heard Robert Ginsburg speak once about the chance at night when you're on your bed, just like uh, David Amel said. Um, um, but there's a chance to really deeply think about God and what you're desiring. So in this uh, in this Pasuk, in this verse, in this mashal, um, the bribe is saying that on my bedside on, me, uh, on nights, I have um, asked, Bikashti, et nafshi, bikashti velo I asked for the one I love, I desire the one I love, um, the one that my soul loves, and I um, asked for him and could not find him. So that's the first Pasuk. So what does she do? Akumana, I... Wake up, I get up, and I go around in the city, in the marketplaces, in, in the streets. I go to the streets. Uh, we will talk about that in uh, um, uh, further. Um, so I look for the one that, I, uh, that my soul um, loves. I look for him, and I could not find him. That's the second pasuk. The third one is Metzauni Yashomerim Asovivim Bayir. There are guards that are guarding the city. They find me and they see someone looking around and they uh, and and um, the bribe approaches them and says, "Et shavan afshireitem." Did you see the one that my uh, my soul loves? Kim at shavarti I almost I almost left them. At shematzati shavan afshi until I found. Uh, what my soul loves, the one that my soul loves. I held them very strongly and I didn't let him go. Until I brought him to, uh, to my mother's house and, and my, uh, into my room. So that's, that's the uh, beautiful uh, verses in, in Shira Shirim. And this is, of course, a mashal. And the mashal is that we, we, we love God. We look for God. Um, and we can't find them, and we, we really can't, we can't go to sleep at night. So before we move forward, I just want to a little bit go into the wonders, I mean, uh, that Rabbi Ginsburg goes into that you can find in these psukim. So obviously there's endless wonders in, in the verses in the, in the Tanakh, but uh, we're going to go into uh, the first wonder that we're going to look at. We're going to have a, um, uh, we're going to, look into it a little bit deeply. I'm not going to go into it that much, but I just want to um, show. So there's four times that um, that we find um, the special um, uh, verse, Etcha Vanafshi, the, uh, the one that my soul loves. And here we, I'm going to highlight the four times before I go down. This is the first time in the first Pasuk and the second time. And the third time, and finally, 
um, the fourth time. So there's four times, and we know that the name of God has four letters. And this is a deep hitbonenut um, uh, that, that we do um, into the name of God. Again, I'm not going to go into it in deep, um, uh, partially because uh, there's a lot that um, I don't know and understand in the deep uh, uh, look of uh, the, the name of God, which Rabbi Ginsburg has a whole book about. It's called The Secret uh, of God to His uh, um, Yereim. Yereim, we said, is sensitive people. So, um, But we will look at these, uh, uh, these uh, minimum uh, view that um, there are four letters in the name of God, Yud and, and He, and then the letter Vav, and then the last letter. And if we want to look at these four, there's basically four steps uh, about looking for God, the one, the one that we love, the one that our soul desires. The, the lowest level is uh, the pasuk that we sleep at night and ask for God. And then the one above that is we already get up and, and look in the city. And the one above that is we have the guards, uh, the, the deep uh, meaning of chokhmah, wisdom that you're already on when you go up to that level. And finally, finding God is, is the highest uh, level in God's name. Uh, so that's the first wonder that you can really look into uh, these uh, verses and, and uh, try to understand and, and, and find a lot of uh, diamonds uh, in this, uh, in this uh, wonder. But we're going to go to the second one, which I want to touch a little bit more. Second wonder is if you count the letters um, in this, um, uh, not the letters, I'm sorry, the words, in these uh, psukim, you get 49 words. And we know that 49 um, is numerically the same number as the word chole, sick. Now, um, someone who's sick, again, we said that the um, uh, illness here um, uh, is, is an illness of love. Someone really, really loves someone. Uh, again, we, uh, we can connect to that in various different levels. Love is something... Uh, that everyone has, whether it's to a family member or wife or kids, uh, father, mother, etc. But when we love someone really much and we we don't, um, we're far away from him, we don't have him, um, you can get really sick. We spoke about the previous Rebbe of Chabad. He got really, really sick when his father passed away and he almost passed away um, at the age of 40 uh, when his father passed away. So when you love someone really much, you can you can be sick from it. So again, the word sick, chole, it has 40, um, um, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. The, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, small mistake I made. There's 50 letters, see? You should count them, <laughs> not just trust on me. There's 50 letters in these psukim. So 49 is sick and 50 is uh, the gate of nun, shah and nun, the letter nun, which um, uh, presents uh, um, uh, full, uh, a full level. Again, it's something deep that um, um, I don't like uh, saying it too much, so I'm not gonna, um, I'm gonna try to say it less, but there's a deep meaning of the letter Nun that we're gonna leave for right now. And the letter Nun presents 50, and 50 is the highest level that uh, Moshe Rabbeinu always wanted to get to that level. And at the last, uh, before he left uh, this world, he got to the level of Nun, to having full 50 uh, gates of wisdom. Um, so again, 49 presents an ill person. And when someone gets to that 50, he finds the 50th level. That's when he can basically get better. That's when he, he, get, he overcomes this sickness. But we want to continue with the Baal Shem Tov. So again, we brought um, the Baal Shem, We brought uh, from the Baal Shem Tov the uh, first four psukim in the third chapter of Shira Shirim to tell a story about a bride, a kala, which is a mashal to our soul that that loves um, uh, her um, the one who her soul uh, desires, which is uh, a mashal to to God, and um, she tries to find him, and then finally she finds him. So that's the full um, four psukim that we brought. And the Baal Shem Tov explains, and I'm going to um, try to um, read it um, inside a little bit. Um, the Baal Shem Tov explains, So he takes this, the psukim, the gomet, 
and he explains that um, that uh, there was a king. This is a mushal. This is a um, what's the English world for mushal? If someone wants to, um, uh, if someone wants, uh, I mean, it's a parable is a is the simple translation, but um, um, the story that the Baal Shem Tov told is that there was once a king that um, created gates um, and uh, borders between him um, um, and um, between him and then his kingdom and and, uh, and every every level בכל שארי החומות סיבה לפזר ממון שיהיה חומה לפנים פזרו הון יותר כדי להראות זריזות וחשק בני המדינה. So the, look at it like a circle. So the king created a circle around him and then a circle around that circle. And in every circle, he put in tremendous amount of wealth and let's uh, look at it as uh, diamonds. Later on, we'll look at it a little bit differently. What did he put in between these gates? But he creates a gate in front of a gate in front of a gate and um, and before every gate, before every border, there was a lot, tremendous amount of wealth. So let's try to think of it in our. Um, uh, let's try to think of the story. You're coming to a city. You know there's a king, and you want to see the king. I mean, that's that's an amazing thing to be next to the king. Uh, even if we just uh, have to look at any king uh, or any let's call a famous person that we really want to. Uh, connect to someone's very smart. Uh, everyone can uh, think of a person that they want to get to, and obviously a person is uh, uh, only a parable to to God. But you want to get connected to that king, so you go to his kingdom. And when you go to his kingdom, you have a gate, and in that gate, all of a sudden, you see fifty thousand dollars just laying around in various different diamonds and and uh, stock papers, <laughs> various different distractions, temptations. And every time you want to get closer, it gets, there's, there's more. The, um, so what the king wants is how much do you really want to see him? Because, I mean, if we imagine, if uh, let's say someone very important calls us for a meeting, let's say, um, uh, I don't know, like politician, let's say a famous rabbi, uh, uh, Rabbi Kanievsky, we speak about, uh, and, uh, there's a lot of talks about him in various different circles. Um, a big rabbi calls you for a meeting, and you go to his, let's say, his house in, in Bnei Brak, and right when you get to the front gate of his of his building, even, you see on the floor laying hundred dollar bills. <laughs> Do you stop to collect them and you say, "Hey, I'm rushing to a meeting"? I mean, you you need to be on time. There's a meeting. So what do you do? Uh, okay, we'll let it go. Then you you start going up the steps. And all of a sudden you see it's not just hundred dollar bills on the floor that you can collect. Now it's stacks. It's stacked up very high, lots of money. Now you're starting to debate. And then you're going up the steps, someone stops you and says, hey, I know you. And then you see someone you really wanted to speak to about uh, you know, some personal stuff. Or So again, every level um, you get higher temptations and, and, and then everyone stops at a certain level. The first person stops at the gate and the second, and, and the king wants to see zrizut, the um, how um, how fast uh, the simple uh, um, uh, the simple explanation of zrizut is uh, is quickness basically, but uh, there's more there's fancier words or different ways of looking at it. Um, uh, so again, the king wants to see how quick and how determined and how much desire do you have to get to him, to get to the king himself and not to be distracted by everything around. Um, and after this one person that we're saying this mashal about, um, uh, we can, uh, Rabbi Ginsburg goes into a little bit who's that person, but for right now, that person that wants to come to the king um, after he, I, I mean, you can look at it as um, uh, trials or, uh, or after a lot of work that he did. Um, when they came to the king, um, in this mashal, it's a couple people, it's the whole um, kingdom. 
וראו שאין שום חומה ומחיצה כי אם אחיזת עיניים. Um, again, the story is brought in a couple different uh, ways, but um, the, one of the ways that we look at it is that the king told them to turn around, and then when they turned around, they saw that everything is, is an illusion. <laughs> It's very easy in our generation to imagine like uh, um, all these things that you saw, the hundred dollar bills are, let's just say fake. I don't like it because it's not, it ruins the muscle a little bit. Um, the, but uh, let's say they're, um, they're all um, uh, like a 3D image or something. Um, so again, what, 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 does, what, are we, what, what does this story represent? So the story represents a king who tries to, che to check the quickness and the desire of the kingdom to come to see him. Now, who are these, uh, who are these tzaddikim? That we, there's a famous passage that ve'amech uh, kulam tzadikim that all the uh, uh, all the bnei Israel, all the nation of Israel are all uh, righteous uh, tzadikim. And when we say a tzadik, we look at every single person. You know, there's a small tzadik and a big tzadik, but everyone is a tzadik and everyone is being tested. Um, um, so, um, what are we being tested on? We're tested on how much do we want to connect. directly to God. Again, um, connection, the word connection is the word mitzvah, tzivui, and tzavta. Mitzvah is uh, when we say a commandment um, that God gives us, the, the Zohar explains that, that the lashon of it, the language of mitzvah, of commandment, is really in Hebrew connected to tzavta, togetherness. Um, that um, when you do something that the king says, You know, in this example, the king calls you to, to talk to him. When you're doing this um, uh, desire of the king, of yourself, to go speak to him, and you're not being distracted, you know, in a vera, a, a chet, if we look at the word chet, um, I'm, I'm going a little bit to the side here, but um, if we look at the word chet, um, which is usually translated as a sin, chet is, is also a word of, uh, um, of uh, missing the target. Meaning, a sin in this explanation of this story would be to look or to do other things other than try to connect to the king here. So the king wants you to come in. He called you in, uh, or he let you come in. And um, um, a mitzvah, a commandment, uh, a togetherness would be to connect to the king. And a sin would be to... Um, to to go off, uh, what they call off the derech, off the road, to, to go collect the cash that's on the floor. We'll talk a little bit about what, the, what that internally means. Um, so that's, that's the test. So again, some people get to the king and some people stop in the middle. And this, is, this test is the trial of our life. This is our life. Our life is as... as, uh, as humans, as, uh, as Jews, as, um, as, as tzaddikim, as righteous people, people that want to connect, um, do we get distracted or do we go directly for the king? Um, and the one, the one person that wants to reach the king and only the king, that's the most righteous person. That's the leader of the generation. Again, why do we want someone as a leader in this uh, story that we're bringing from the Baal Shem Tov? Why do we want a leader? We want a leader because we want someone to connect us directly. We don't want to be distracted. We don't want to go off the road. And we want someone that doesn't get distracted. Um, so um, uh, Rabbi Ginsburg brings here that, um, that uh, the, um, uh, there's a saying from a uh, famous uh, Hasid uh, Chabad, Rabbi Isaac Meumel, um, that there's, uh, in this, there's two options to say until something. You can say, I'm, I'm going ad ve ad bichlal or ad ve lo ad bichlal, meaning until something. When I am saying, I'm going until I get to Jerusalem, does it mean that I get to Jerusalem? Or does it mean that I'm at the gates of Jerusalem? It's called until, ad. So he explains that this, this world is ad ve lo ad bichlal, is getting until you get to something does not mean you actually get there. When you actually get there, you're out of the gate. That's this world. And he says that the world to come, 
that that um, redemption geula uh, shelema means that ad ve'ad bechlal that you need to get there and you actually get there. Um, and another side comment that Rabbi Ginsburg goes into is that the um, this uh, story, this mashal, when the, the Baal Shem Tov would uh, would say it every year, he would say it before they blew the shofar um, on on uh, Rosh Hashanah, before the year started. And when the when the Jewish year starts, um, there's a, a, a very um, let's call it the highlight of the year, is blowing the shofar in, um, in the first day. And that basically creates after the head, the body comes. The head is the, the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. And within that, the, the main point of the Rosh Hashanah, of the head of the year, is blowing of the shofar. And before he blew the shofar, he would say this story. Um, and the pasuk that we say, the verse that we say before we blow the shofar is Ashreya Am, blessed is the nation, Yod Eiteruah. Again, you can explain it in many different ways that have the knowledge of of blowing of Teruah um, is um, in this explanation is uh, um, is to to shout out, but um, it's to blow the shofar. There's a lot of uh, very deep uh, explanation of this world, this word uh, uh, um, to cry out, to, to blow the shofar. To um, by the way, the the word tua plus a hundred blows equals this year tafshin peyalev, which is the year from um, beginning of creation till this year. I'm not going to get into it too much, but the knowledge, this knowledge of this mashal, of this uh, explanation, of this story of the king, is the knowledge needed to start the year and really to start creation. The knowledge that there's a story here going on, the Baal Shem Tov, by um, uh, his chassidut, is, is explaining, is telling us this wondrous story um, about the king that um, wants everyone to come to him and creates these gates in the middle, these uh, temptations, and we'll speak about more that um, in, all right, we'll talk about that more, but this story is the core story that with this story, this marshal, we can start the year. Uh, Rabbi Ginsburg goes into that in Rosh Hashanah, in the, that uh, beginning of the year, there are three ways um, of looking at uh, Hashem, uh, God. Um, we can look at him as Avinu, as our father, Malkeinu as our king, or Dodeinu as our um, uh, uncle, but really uncles explain more as a as a chatan, as a husband, as a uh, a groom. So um, so in this explanation, there, there's there's various uh, different um, ways that this story was told. Um, one of the ways that they were told that between these gates, up till now we spoke about crazy wealth that is put between the gates. But um, one of the uh, ways of telling the story is that there isn't wealth, but rather there is uh, um, bad things. I think uh, it's speaking about um, um, scorpions and snakes and, and darkness, uh, various different um, things that stop you. Again, we said that there's love of God and, and fear or sensitivity. So you can be tempted by other loves. Um, again, we, we know about love of uh, money or food or or respect or, or kavod. Um, so there's those types of temptations, but there's also fear. You can fear from going to the next level. You can fear um, fear um, every every level you come in. You can fear from the next level. So. Um, when you uh, when uh, we uh, heard the story from the Baal Shem Tov, one time we spoke, uh, he spoke about temptations, and other time he spoke about fear. Um, okay, so that's um, um, there's a, again I'm ending the side note that uh, brought uh, Rosh Hashanah the first day and and looking at God as Avinu our Father, which is like a Ben uh, a Ben loves the Father, so that's more like love. And then there's Malkeinu, our king, uh, which is more of a servant. And then Dodeinu 
is is more like the way we read the mashal, like uh, a bride that's looking for her husband, that, that loves her husband and looks for him. So um, um, now we look at the end of the story. The end of the story it talks about these these walls, um, these barriers, these borders between um, the king and us. Hen al pi achizate nine. The really the really an illusion. That's 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 um, that's the way the Baal Shem Tov explained the story. Now, what is the illusion? So he explained that there's two ways of looking at this world, two knowledges, and it comes from the pasuk El deot avaya velonit kenuelilot. That God is the God of uh, of two types of knowledge, deot. The deot is not dea, which is one knowledge. There's two types of knowledge, and he's the one that creates. Um, Alilot, uh, let's call it stories. So what are these two types of knowledge? The, the way we say it is there's two ways to look at things. You can look at things the way we look at it, or you can look at it the way um, the one above looks at it. So you can look at it from below to above. That's called datachton, the knowledge of the lower one. Or you can look at it the way that God looks at it, datelyon. So again, when you're looking at something, the question is, what point of view do you have on it? What, um, and, and God has both point of views at the same time. He looks at it from the way he created it, the reason why he created this um, abstraction and the way these, these borders, these different temptations, this world is uh, from his way of looking at it, but he, at the same time, he can also look at it from our way of looking at it. It's, it's a real border, it's a real problem. This world presents real problems. Uh, what, one of the questions they like to ask once, once you really think about God is, does this world exist? And if it exists, are these problems real? And the answer is, it depends how you look at it. If you look at it from our way of looking at it, they are absolutely the biggest problem in the world. If you look at it from God's ways, there's no problem. But God has both ways of looking at it. Um, we can get into it a lot, and, and the difference between the point of views. Rabbi Ginsburg has a, a several different classes to explain it. Um, again, we'll, um, we'll um, leave it for maybe later, maybe another time. Um, but this, this story, when you look at it from our angles, it looks like tremendous amount of distractions to get to God. But when at the end, when you get to the end, or when you look at it from God's way of looking at it, which is the way the leaders look at it, and we'll speak about that a little bit more once we um, uh, go down a little bit. We're a bit running out of time, so we'll try to rush it a little bit more. Um, the, the way the leaders look at it is there's no distractions, that all of these distractions are a test, and the test is meant to, to, to gain something. To, uh, when... Uh, and again, what do we gain is, again, something that, that, that it deserves a whole different class on its own. But we're right now looking at this test. And what is the test? The test is, do you stop in the middle or do you get to it? Now, there's a story that Rabbi Ginsburg brings about the first Rebbe of Chabad, the Alter Rebbe, that went to Rabbi Pinchas Mikowitz. And Rabbi Pinchas Mikowitz told him, if you want to stay with me and let me teach you instead of going to... Um, who became uh, the Alter Rebbe's Rebbe, the Magid from Ezridge. Um, if you want to stay with me, I will teach you very wondrous things, the talks of angels, Sichat Galim, Sichat Malachim, the talks of the creation and the talk of angels. I will give you very, very high levels. And what the Alter Rebbe said is, I don't want these high levels. I want to, he, he told them uh, very deep uh, things that he wants, Yachid Echad Va'ed. Um, but I want God. I don't want div different levels. I'm not going to be distracted. These levels are great, but I'm not going to be distracted by them. And, and getting to really to what I need to learn to be connected to God, I will get in Mezrich, in the city of Mezrich with the Magid, with who was uh, the uh, teacher and the Rebbe of, of the, uh, the first Rebbe of Chabad. But um, again, what we learn from this story is that the desire is to get to the core of things, to get the real um, love of God, and that you get to when you 
um, when you overcome the distractions and the different temptations. Um, so who gets to it? Again, this, this gets to a very famous saying, again, by the first Rebbe of Chabad, that I don't want, um, God, I do not want um, um, your um, uh, world to come. I don't want your Ganeiden. I don't want uh, your Ganem. I, I just want you. So this is a very, very deep and beautiful saying of, of the first Rebbe of Chabad, that, that we want God. We don't want distractions. And distractions could be... Um, Again, simple stuff, food, money, house, kids, um, et cetera. It could be um, bad distractions, such as people that have health issues and other issues. And it could also be high levels of knowledge and understanding, um, but still not getting to, to, to God. Um, we're going to continue in the Baal Shem Tov. Um, and... Um, Again, the um, the explanation to this bear parable is uh, is muvan is understood obviously. If you, uh, the parashanto is very much understood. Shamelech hagadol va'anora mistater bekam levushin u'mechitzot v'em machshavot zarot v'itul torah v'tfila. The God is um, hides himself in a lot of um, um, borders and hiding and, and, and different dresses, you can call them. Um, and those things are presenting itself in, um, let's call it unfocus. Machshavot uh, Zarot is, uh, you can literally translate as foreign thoughts, as thoughts that are not um, connected, but just um, that, that you do not study uh, Torah, you're not connected to, with the study of Torah, and you're not connected to God by, by praying. Um, so those are the things that are separating between us and God. And we're really um, um, getting to our end of time, so we're going to try to rush even more. Again, the point of this study group is just to give uh, a gate, an opening to these wonderful wonders that every week Rabbi Ginsburg puts out, currently only in, uh, Engl- in Hebrew. Uh, Hashem, one day we'll get to it, that it will be translated to every language. But... Um, um, to dive uh, much more into it and to uh, gain a lot more from it, it would be obviously if uh, people, um, if anyone, I uh, urge everyone to sit down on Shabbat or on, during the week and learn um, these, uh, this niflaot, uh, uh, these wonders that we get every week. Um, but going back to our mashal, uh, Rabbi Ginsburg explained that this mashal, um, Brings from the Baal Shem that this mashal is um, is in Kmoshi Katu Bazar, is already written in the Zohar in Kabbalah. Um, that um, the way the way it's brought in Kabbalah is a little bit differently. Kiatova Ganuz, the inner good, is surrounded by darkness. So Rabbi Ginsburg explains a little bit that every day, they're like thorns to the vineyard. So um, that there is a yashomrim acherim kmo nechashim v'akrabim v'sarafim. That there is different guards like snakes and scorpions and different things. But what are these things? What is this darkness? This is darkness that surrounds every day's light. So what Rabbi Ginsburg explains is that every day when God created light, let's say first day there will be light. That light is surrounded by the darkness of that day, and that darkness. Uh, acts as two things. We're going to, again, rush through it. It acts as a protector that anyone that's not supposed to be there, that's not supposed to be connected, is going to be thrown off. Um, and it also acts as a um, as a connector to uh, to God, that, that anyone that is supposed to be there gets connected to it. And this is the way uh, it's brought in Kabbalah and... Um, the, uh, the Baal Shem Tov explains it. And, and again, that um, what is the connection, again, between these two things? Um, so Rabbi Ginsburg explains, and we're going to touch it a little bit, that there's a question in Hasidut in uh, um, explaining the concept of darkness. What is darkness? Is darkness the fact that there's no light? Meaning that 
something is dark only because there's no light. And if there's light on it, there's no darkness. So really there's no such thing as darkness. It's just when you hide the light, it creates this thing called darkness, but there's no real darkness or that the darkness itself is, let's call it real, is something um, on its own. And why, why is this important to us? Because the question is, how do you look at this world? How do you look at temptations? Do you look at them as something that's, that's real? Well, let's, let's bring it down. Let's bring it relevant. Let's bring it to us. How do you look at, um, let's say you're trying to get to, to, to pray, and you have a phone call from someone that you must answer because it's important for business. How do you look at this? Do you look at it as this is nothing? You got to ignore the phone call and connect to what you need to do to God, or maybe the opposite. You got to ignore your desire to pray and you got to do what you got to do. Either way, however you want to look at it. Or do we say that that phone call has a connection, has a meaning? to my connection with God. Does this um, temptation, is it something that should be ignored, that it's only there to create, um, let's call it a, a problem, an illusion that I can overcome and then connect to God, which means that there's no real darkness, it's just no light. And then once I connect to God, everything will be poof, blown off. Or is it the opposite, that this temptation is something that's supposed to help me in the step that this darkness has a, a point to it. And the point to it is to connect me to God. And Rabbi Ginsburg ends, um, brings the Baal Shem Tov's end to this. It says, Kmo katuv, that there's a, a verse, alufeinu mesubalim, that are, are aluf. Aluf is, uh, there's a couple of ways of explaining, a leader, a leader of a thousand, elif. Um, but our leaders are mesubalim. This is a very interesting world, a word that Rabbi Ginsburg goes into. It could also, it could mean that they're carrying things on them. It could mean that they're surrounded by things. It could mean that they're, um, that they're suffering. Seven is also, what does this world me- word mean is, is the um, deep meaning of, uh, of uh, the Baal the Wing. She, she, that when, um, again, what is the verse? The verse says like this, that our leaders are this world, let's call it our suffering. There's no um, um, desecration, there's no leaving. I'm, I'm going to skip, uh, Rabbi Ginsburg goes into what that means, that, that um, all the temptations of this generation and all the problems, peret, yotzet, are um, scream. Uh, all these things are um, are not there, the verse says, because our leaders are alufenu mesubalim. So the Baal Shem explains that um, when, uh, when he knows that alufo shelulam, again, we can look at it as our leaders or we can look at it as God. When God is suffering or surrounding everything, once you know that, there's no problems. And again, when we look at this story, and with this will end, um, and again, I know I opened a lot of things that I didn't close, and maybe I'll leave a couple minutes to question, but with this will end, that what is the point of this? The point of this is to say that when we know, and when we're connected to our leaders, which know, that all of the trials and all of the desires and the temptations and the fear and the, and the bad things in this world are all connected and really have part in God's plan. And not just part in God's plan, they're not supposed to be ignored, but really supposed to be connected to everything, then there's no problem. Then you can connect to everything, you can, you can have everything be part. It's just like this story that when you get to the king, you turn around and it all blows away. Um, and to say this again, the way we look at it, the way we can look at it every day when we, when we read the Pasha, when we go into the week, that we, we want to love God. We want to have sensitivity to God. How do we do it? We can obviously do it by ignoring all the problems that, that, that stop us from studying, from connecting. Or we can do it by seeing God in everything. That we know that every trial, every... Every hundred dollar bill that's thrown at you and every smack that someone gives you has um, is 
has a way of connecting you to the final level of connecting to God. Once you know that, there will be no problems. Um, I'm going to uh, stay on here a minute or two to see if anyone wants to ask a specific question, and then we'll close this one with a lot of open ends that uh, will make uh, people want to study a little bit more these wonders that Rabbi Ginsburg puts out. So any questions? Any thoughts? Okay, so may everyone have uh, Shabbat Shalom. As I said, that Wednesday is the first day that um, if you look at the week, not from a Sunday through Saturday, but from a Wednesday through Tuesday with Shabbat, Saturday in the middle. So Wednesday is the beginning of the next Shabbat. So everyone should have Shabbat Shalom. And uh, may uh, the people that we mentioned, Arav and my kids, my babies, and um, and our friends will all have an all clearly saw that suffering these days uh, for many different things. Everyone should have a Rosh Hashanah, and thank you everyone who joined us.